Previously, we rode out in a 12-hour storm, picked up provisions in Spanish Town, and made it to Gorda Sound. Good morning. Moored up next to Prickly Pear Island in Virgigorda Sound. I believe it's Tuesday. Wednesday. We're we'll having a nice breakfast before we head out and do some snorkeling today. Just west of Saba Rock is a lesser known sandbox beach bar. We were here at the end of the season and had the entire island all to ourselves. We filled the morning with a game of paddleboard and saw some amazing views after a short hike to the top of the hill. After a great morning, we headed to Saba Rock for lunch. A flamingo flew past us as we motored to the famous little island. We tried to catch up to it for a photo, but it was well ahead of us. After lunch, it was time for some sailing. Still a bit unsure about the rig from the lightning strike two days before, we cautiously worked our way out of the harbor, but quickly dialed in the sails on our way back to the dogs where it was time to do some snorkeling. The conditions were perfect. The water was clear, warm, and the seas were flat. We tied up to the same mooring that had held us through the storm a few nights before as a gesture of thanks to Poseidon and the National Park Trust, which does a great job of maintaining the mooring equipment. It was wonderful to see how healthy the reef was and the variety of fish and corals. The site had great drop-offs to explore. I find that sometimes it's just best to slow down and watch things go by. This was the first time I had seen squid in the open water. I followed them around for quite a while. After our free dive, we headed west and found a great spot for the night. Well protected and not a soul in sight. Good job, Captain. We had just pulled up to our very own private beach for the night, or so we thought. Just before sunset, the Sea Trek fleet arrived. Seems they had the same idea we did about a private cove. We had met the well-run group a few days earlier. They teach teens how to dive and about the environmental sciences. Talk about a great way to spend your summer. Our night included an awesome drunk history story by Kat and a few heavy pours, which led to this. That's my hammock. And it's hammock. I'm not exactly sure what I had created there, but after checking the fluids in the morning, we got underway early and headed towards Joe's fan bike. We had time to test our homemade trolling camera. We still need some tweaks to stabilize, but it worked. One thing that impressed me about this area was how much untouched land there was. The area is so well maintained and protected by the locals. The north side of Tortola is also the quiet side. It's typically where you'll find surfers during the windy season. We were under sail and enjoying the beautiful views. It was truly one of those great days to be out on the water. The next stop was off Little Joe's Fan Bank. It was an incredible sandbar and a shallow reef that was too irresistible not to snorkel. Now that we had arrived at Joe's Van Dyke, it was time for a snorkel along Green Cay and have a few much deserved sundowners at Foxy's Taboo.
So we are here at Foxy for drinks and appetizers after a nice little snorkel on a very shallow creek where we saw an octopus, a black chip shark, a bunch of baby fish. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. This spot is what you think of when you picture a tropical island beach bar. Sandy floors, open air, strong drinks, and great people. <laughs> oh, and of course, we have to give the slack line a try. It was an absolutely perfect day. Sadly, it was this little island that was demolished by Irma, but is currently being rebuilt to serve salty sailors this season. Join us next time as we jump off the Willy T, head into the caves, sail into U.S. waters, and free dive the Indians. How's it going? Very good. Did you know that there's a cat right next to your feet?